I think that you should give these fragrances a try before they go away forever. Now, some of these have been discontinued, and maybe they have been for a while, but they still pop up relatively often. Um, maybe a couple of these haven't been discontinued, but just kind of looking back on other fragrances within the line or from the house in general, there's a good chance that at some point they might be. And so I like to always try to stay ahead of the curve because at this point I've learned my lesson and I know how the life cycle goes. We're in the world of flankers now and in order to keep releasing new ones, at some point you have to thin the herd and get rid of some of the older releases in order to make room. And so for me, these are some fragrances that I absolutely love. And if your taste is anything like mine, you might like them as well. And it might not be a bad idea to try them before it's too late. And I'll link all these down below. No guarantee in terms of the uh, current stock at the moment. But like I said, a lot of the times at one point or another, they do pop up. You just have to be diligent in looking for them. I also do all the work for you in that regard on my mailing list and texting list. It's a free service you can sign up to, and I send out notifications anytime rare stuff or new fragrances hit discounters, anything like that. The first one is Aqua de Jo Absolu. It's been out for a while, and it never was all that popular, at least in comparison to some of their other notable releases, going all the way back to something like Aqua de Jo Ascenza, which got a decent amount of uh, exposure and, and positive feedback and got discontinued, but then also things like Profondo, Profumo, things like that, which, you know, are also very popular and, you know, still exists. And so this one, though, not so much. It's been popping up pretty consistently on discounters, so it's not all that hard to get. But in terms of being in production, that is no longer the case. That kind of sucks because I love it. I think it's really wearable and it's one that even for me has been easy to forget about. I just get caught up with the other ones, okay? And Going back to it though, it smells fantastic. It's a little bit more of a bubblegummy, playful take on that DNA, but it's done in a really good way to where it provides a little bit of a unique twist given that it still has that Aqua de Jo baseline. I would recommend grabbing this one if you're into playful, fun, easygoing, semi-sweet summer scents. And I know a lot of you guys are, I know I am. It's gonna be a great compliment getter. It's a really good performer. It's, again, very versatile, something that you could wear really without having to think about it at all. And like I said, might not be in stock at the moment, but it has been popping up pretty often recently, which is perfect timing for summer and even spring right now. So definitely try this one out if you haven't already. Next up, we have Hugo Boss The Scent Absolute. So this one has ginger, manica fruit, and vetiver. Big fan of it. Talked about it quite a bit on the channel, and I'm a big fan of the entire lineup. You know, when you look at it though, they do discontinue some of their notable releases. Hugo Boss, The Scent Intense has been discontinued and has been for a while, and that was a fantastic one. Had a really nice coffee note in there. Smelled great. One thing that makes me nervous, uh, the new one, the new release. Well, for whatever reason, they don't have maninka fruit in that one. I don't know what's up with that. It's a little bit odd because every other The Scent flanker has had maninka fruit in it. So that's a little bit weird. And that note is what makes this scent so unique and it makes it stand out in a positive way. And so that note still exists here in Absolute, comes through. You can't miss it. it. Smells great. Just a very unique, sweet fruitiness. Getting some vetiver here, kind of a soapy or clean vetiver, giving it some texture. A little bit of a spicy kick off the top from the ginger. Also, I'm getting like a tonka bean and maybe a bit of patchouli in here as well, even though those aren't listed off. That's kind of what I'm picking up on further along in the base. This is a great one for fall and winter time that just isn't gonna be around forever. It's been spotty on discounters for a while, still pops up from time to time, but yeah, I would uh, definitely get ahead of the game and try to grab this one, if you can, before it's too late. This would make a great collector's piece because these are really good, and again, over time, they're just gonna get harder to find as they continue to release new ones. Next up, we have Azaro Pour Ohm Intense. What a great release. I remember discovering this one a few winters ago, and it was a very, very surprising 
blind buy for me in the fact that I didn't think it was going to be as good as it is. This one has cinnamon, brandy, and then of course, just kind of in the base, that original Azaro Pour Homme DNA, which Azaro Pour Homme is an aromatic fougere. So this is kind of built around that, but with a warm, spicy, cinnamon, boozy approach, making it really nice for fall and winter time. It smells so good. And in typical fashion, not long after I found it and I started telling everybody about it, it got discontinued. And I'm not saying I had anything to do with that. I didn't. I was just a bit late to the game and then it got to the point where they weren't going to make it anymore. For the longest time, it's been sold out, but it's back in stock right now. You can get 100 ml testers with no cap, so it'll look just like this for about 47 bucks. That's not bad. That's about what it was going for when it was in production, full presentation. So yeah, you're not getting a cap. It might not look the best, right? But I mean, to me, still worth it. it smells beautiful. So I'll link it down below. I sent out an email and a text about it a while back. So those platforms heard about that first, like a week ago or so, um, but it's still up. You guys can grab a bottle. I recommend it because I don't think it's going to be around long. They're going to sell out soon. And also, I don't know if and when it's going to come back, especially not for that price. A rare one, a discontinued one that you can get right now that also happens to be amazing. It's a little bit out of season, but still worth picking up a Zara Pour Homme Intense. Next up, we have YSL Lanoui de Lome Le Parfum. So this line is growing pretty extensively at this point. They have quite a few flankers, a lot of which have been discontinued, which kind of thins it out. So in terms of their in-production catalog, it's pretty slim. But when you look at the grand scheme of things and you look at my shelf back here off camera, which essentially three quarters of it is dedicated just to Loam and Lanoui de Loam, that puts it into perspective how many there are. It's crazy. And yeah, I get they're two separate lines, but they kind of go hand in hand and, and both of them are pretty extensive. Uh, Lanoui de Loam Blue Electrique, a very, very weird circumstance where it was in production and everybody was loving it. And then like a year or less than a year later, discontinued and very hard to get now strange okay and this is not that this is Lanoui de Lome Le Parfum which is a bit easier to get but still is spotty it's not consistently in stock like Lanoui de Lome, Lome and a couple of the others and one more thing to clarify this is Lanoui de Lome Le Parfum not Lome Le Parfum I also love that one but we're talking this now this one has fruity notes vanilla and pepper so when you smell this it, it kind of has a very similar construction that the regular Lanoui de Lome has. Has spices, pepper, and a bit of a sweetness. Okay, and that's what Lanoui de Lome has. Spices from the cardamom, kind of a little bit of a sweetness underlying, some lavender aromatics. Now this one has a little bit of a fruitiness, a bit of vanilla in here as well, but a very similar style just with a different overall take. And it's interesting. And the fact that this is actually a little bit lighter and fresher than the regular Lanoui de Lome. So they're calling this a Le Parfum. The bottle has kind of an, a darker look to it. You might venture to think that it's heavier and richer than the original, but that would not be the case. A little bit backwards here, but nonetheless, a fantastic release for fall and even spring. Would work great for winter as well, but it's a little bit more in the middle uh, to me, which is kind of why I chose those two seasons. Definitely pick this one up. If nothing else, it's gonna be a great collector's piece just to have around. It'll be another iconic Lanoui de Lone flanker, um, but also it's just a great, easy one to wear in a variety of situations. Next up, we have Dolce & Gabbana, the one gray. So similar deal, guys. It's kind of a broken record, but not always in stock, but pops up relatively often. And, you know, a lot of these are kind of starting to sell through quickly because a lot of people are catching on to the fact that these are kind of not looking too good anymore. And at one point, the One Gray was one of the most affordable Dolce & Gabbana fragrances you can buy in general, and also just one of the most affordable the One releases. These days, and I don't know why, but the One Eau de Parfum on discounters is still 70 to $80. It used to be 50 bucks every day of the week. I don't know what happened there, but yeah, it's gone up in price on discounters. 
Um, some of the other flankers, similar deal. The exclusive editions, of course, are expensive as well. Those are getting hard to find too. Uh, but the one gray was <laughs> consistently like 35 bucks for 100 ml, 40 bucks for 100 ml, very affordable. It's gone up a little bit and it's just getting harder to find. So what's this one? It's a grapefruit vetiver take on Dolce & Gabbana, the one EDP. Now I get the one EDP, EDT, they have grapefruit. This one has more of it and the vetiver makes it fresher, soapier, more clean, more fresh. The best way to describe this one is you wear Dolce & Gabbana, the one gray to school, to work during the daytime. You can easily transition over to the one eau de parfum for the evening, going out with friends, going out doing whatever in the evening. They flow seamlessly together and that would be a great way to kind of switch over to a different style scent without having to wash the other one off. I just think the one gray is probably a bit more appropriate for a work environment, school environment, not to say that the one EDP, EDT wouldn't be because it still would work great. But this is just more of a daytime, fresh, clean, safe office work school scent. Just has more versatility. I think a lot of people would just find this one easier to manage. And also, um, at one point, it was cheap enough to where it could be a signature scent and it would really be a, a great budget-friendly option. I still love it and I think it's a great release. It was a pretty smart you know, move on their part to produce this one the way that they did. So I'd recommend grabbing it before it's too late. Prada Loam Intense is up next. This one has just been a really weird roller coaster ride. And the fact that like sometimes it's, you know, being discontinued, but then now it's been in stock and all of that stuff. So who knows at this point? Here lately on Discounters, it's been in stock. Pretty easy to get. 115, 125 bucks within that range. And like I've said before, one of my favorite Prada Lone flankers ever. It is my favorite. This is about the only one that I wear. I wear this one extensively over the original Prada Lone. It's heavier, it's richer, it's more interesting to me. I just love it. Nothing wrong with the others. This is just my preference. It's just, I have other soapier, cleaner scents that I could wear besides Prada Lone. And so oftentimes Prada Lone just gets pushed back, but then this one just has that extra level of depth and richness to where it, it's something that I enjoy. Uh, this one to me, just the leather, the iris, um, just kind of how it's blended together, the tonka bean coming in to play as well, just being sweeter. It's just a lot more inviting, a lot more mysterious as well. And it also makes it great for fall, winter, spring, and summer evenings. Pretty easy to get right now, so I would recommend if you've been on the fence, go ahead and get it right now before maybe someday you can't get it anymore. And last up for this video, Dior Ohm Original. So I don't see this one being around forever. Why? Because they discontinued Dior Ohm and then released Dior Ohm 2020, which is extensively more massive pleasing and versatile. And then at some point they kind of tossed this out there. Okay, yeah, okay, guys, you, you complain, now you can buy the one with Iris again, right? But ever since they released it, it's been almost next to impossible to get. Every so often it pops up on discounters, but not all that often. And usually when it does, it's over at Joma Shop. For whatever reason, they're about the only one that gets it. And then it sells through pretty quickly, as you can imagine. And yeah, I just don't see there being enough demand for this one to where it's really going to be produced for the long run. I would love to be wrong, but I don't know. And even if it is, and you know, that's the case, if it's still always gonna be this hard to get, it makes it pretty challenging. If this was your signature scent and you relied on this one every day and you ran out and then you're waiting around for months at a time to get this one back in stock to buy it again, it's not gonna be your signature scent anymore. You'd have to buy multiple bottles and stock up. And to me, this would be the perfect signature scent. I mean, this would be great for that. So my advice, pick up a bottle of Dior Ohm Original next time it comes in stock. I will notify you when it does and you can grab one. All right, you guys, that's gonna do it for me. Some fragrances you should try before they go away forever. I'll link them down below and if they're not in stock right now, they'll pop up at some point. I'll send out an email and a text. It won't be any problem to get. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.